coming right there. <laughs> All right, hey gents, welcome back to Tactical Rifleman. This week, because you guys are all stuck still sheltering in place, uh, I want to I wanna talk about dry firing, but dry firing with your rifles. Now, you guys know we're big on uh, building muscle memory, right? But if you want to get faster with that draw, you've got to practice that draw. You don't necessarily have to do it with live ammo. You can do it dry firing, right? Takes uh, three to 5,000 repetitions to build that uh, habit for your subconscious mind. That doesn't have to be three to 5,000 rounds of live ammo. It can be dry firing. The only thing you can't do dry firing is recoil management. If you think about it, you can still do uh, draws. You can still do uh, up drills from the high ready, low ready. You can still do all that. You can do practice your mag changes. The only thing you can't do is basically work on that recoil management. But uh, other than that, you can do just about everything. You can't go out to the range. You don't have a range in your backyard like I do. You're trapped in your house. Okay, let's dry fire. All right, step one, get all the live ammo out of the room. Okay, easy stuff. I even, uh, I put dummy rounds in my mags, all right? I use dummy rounds all the time. Use them in classes to make the students actually have to do malfunction drills because if you maintain your firearms, it'll never jam on you, but you still need to practice it. So we use these in class a lot. Um, do you need dummy rounds to dry fire? No, you don't, guys. You can actually take a wadded up piece of paper, stick it into the chamber of your pistol, close it so it just keeps it out of battery just a little bit, and that trigger will not uh, drop the sear. Right, you'll be able to keep running it. That's the cheap way to do it. Trigger doesn't exactly feel the same, right, but there are better ways to do it. One of the ways is uh, with the Dry Fire Mag by dryfiremag.com. I mentioned in the other video, where it comes in handy is if all you're using is your regular pistol, you get that click, that's that correct trigger break but then to dry fire the next time, you've got to rack the slide. So you get your click, you've got to rack the slide, do it again. If you're trying to do multiple shots, I, it would help if that trigger would reset. To reset that trigger, all you've got to do is uh, already have it cocked, put your dry fire mag in there, and then what it does is it, you hear that click? That's it resetting that trigger for me. All right, it's resetting that trigger bar. I, Okay, decent technique. Uh, they even make these dry fire mags with the whole Mantis kit in it. So uh, it'll show you on the app on your phone where all your uh, mistakes were, whether you're pulling the pistol left, right, whether you're fishing, your accuracy, all that stuff. Okay, cool. Um, but you can't really see where you're hitting. Now, uh, there's another company, uh, they make what's called CERT pistols. They, they're training pistols, but they have a laser insert in it. And what it does is it allows you to actually see where that laser hits on the wall. Okay, that's giving you feedback. So you're not just working on speed, dry firing you're still able to work on accuracy. Now, I like to at least have some recoil to deal with. So what we use is, it's, it's I mentioned it before, it's made by Cool Fire Trainer. It is a drop-in barrel and spring, and then all you do is you take your tank of compressed CO2, you gas up your pistol, and then literally, you're done. You're done. It now resets. I've still got the full cycle, and if you thread the laser onto the end, it works just like those CERT pistols you. You can do your draws, and it will give you feedback. It allows you to do those mag changes using mag inserts without it locking that slide to the rear. You notice I had the mag in the gun. So it, it, it doesn't lock to the rear unless you want it to. And uh, good training kit, right? That's awesome. That's awesome, except how about if we want to practice with our rifles, right? That's our primary. We scream rifle, 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 rifle. We've got to be able to practice with our rifle because if you're switching from, let's say, your 5.56 gun to all of a sudden I want to come out to the range and I'm going to teach my next class with my trusty 308. This is my 12 and a half inch from Adam's Arms. Gas piston runs like a champ. 
However, the weight, center of gravity, everything is different than my normal work gun. I need to practice. I can't show up at class with my shots going too high every time I bring it up. How do you practice? You need to practice dry firing and you can do this at home. Now, they make a, uh, they make a drop in uh, bolt by cert. Same thing, it's called the cert bolt. You can slap in your AR, it's $139. Comes with the red, uh, red laser in it. I think it's $200 for the green laser if you've got uh, deep pockets and you want the green laser. And it allows you to work that selector lever. All right, and because the laser runs down the center of the barrel, again, it lets you see where you're hitting. So you're able to work on building that muscle memory. $139, that's, that's a lot of money, but what is the alternative? The alternative is, right, because once you charge it, my hammer's cocked in the gun, when you do that up drill, you bring it up and you get that click, I can't put it back on safe anymore, right? And it won't fall anymore. So what I have to do is then charge the gun, put it back on safe. If that's all you can afford, okay, right? No, there's gotta be a better way to do that. Remember I mentioned uh, sticking the little wedge of paper into your, your Glock or your other safe action pistol, right? Easy way to do it. Carl, there's got to be an easier way to do it. Yeah, um, I was actually shown back in the day for dry firing, guys were actually putting uh, uh, AAA and AA batteries, dropping them into their chambers. I don't want you to do that because one, slamming a dead battery can be bad in your gun, but also I don't want you to have that metal, metal contact chapstick. Literally, that's all you need, guys. How you set it up, all right, is you're gonna lock that bolt to the rear. Lock it to the rear. All you're gonna do is you're gonna roll the chapstick up into the gun, all right, so that it sits roughly where my bullet will be, and then you're gonna ease that bolt forward. Now, you want, uh, you don't want it to go all the way in and hit the charging handle. Make sure you charge the handles forward and then roll it up in there a little bit further and it'll lock. Now, what this is doing is it's holding that bolt carrier back enough that it's not gonna allow the hammer to go forward. So now I can still, right now my trigger's not moving. Trigger's not moving at all. But when I place the weapon onto semi, my trigger now moves. Doesn't move a lot, not as much as an actual trigger pull, but very, very close. And I can rotate that gun, go back on safe. All right, easy. It works in your ARs. Uh, it works in, you just watch me do it in this 308. So now with this gun, when I go to go do my up drills, whatever it is, if I'm working high ready, low ready, whatever it is, when my buzzer goes off, I can present and I get my click. All right, my follow through, Search and assess, put the gun back on safe, I get ready for my next beep, all right? Okay, that works. I mentioned the cert bolt, all right? If you can afford the cert bolt, I'm getting one because I think it's a great idea, all right? Um, 139, I can afford that if I'm stuck in purgatory just like you are. This is my work gun. You guys see this in classes, you'll see it in a lot of our videos. This is actually made by Tactical Edge. You guys know I love this gun, I love this gun. Now, uh, some of you may know in videos that it has a 45 degree throw on the trigger. Okay, I like that. I like my 45 degree throw. That's not the only reason why I love this trigger. It's smooth, it's crisp, that's also awesome. That's not the only reason why I love this trigger. Now, I'm gonna, let you guys see that it's forward, all right? I'm gonna place it on fire, I'm gonna pull the trigger. You're gonna hear my click. That hammer's dropped, right? Now, you know for me to put it back on safe, I have to charge it again. Not on this trigger. On this trigger, I can still flip it back up on the safe. But Carl, the, 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 the hammer's falling. How does it do this? This trigger is designed to allow me to dry fire. All right, so I can still, with it on safe, the trigger does not move at all. I'm pulling as hard as I can. That trigger does not move a bit. But when I put it on to fire, you hearing my click? Guys, I'm not resetting this thing. I've done nothing to the gun at all. All right, so I'm just throwing that out there as an option. There are different triggers. Lots of guys like to put all these race gun triggers 
half pound, two and a half pound. They like all these crazy triggers in their guns. I want a good combat trigger that's reliable, but I also like this one made by Tactical Edge because it allows me to dry fire with it. This is what I like, guys. It works for me. And again, if you're interested in it, it's a 45 degree throw trigger available at tacticaledge.com, blah, blah, blah. All right, um, I, I make no money off of that. I'm letting you know what's actually in my work gun. All right, so I'm set up now. I've got a gun that I can dry fire with, right? I have a pistol that I can dry fire with. I'm ready to uh, dry fire. Let's do this. All right, so what drills do we work on when we dry fire? Carl, tell us what to do. Tell, here's what I want you to do. I want you to work on where you are weak. Now, what I mean by that is if I change holsters, a different type holster, whatever, or a light or something different uh, on my pistol or my kit, I will dry fire to make it perfect. Right, because I have to modify my muscle memory to that new, uh, that new holster. I have a weak spot that I need to fix. Makes sense, right? So the number one thing you need to work on with your pistol is mastering that fast draw, right? Now it's this, same, why, why is that? It's because that most important bullet in that gunfight is often that very first bullet. Who can win at this distance? The guy with the AK is not gonna miss me from here. I have to be faster. Guys, it's the same thing with the rifle. So if you don't know where to start with a rifle, I want you to start with your, uh, with your up drills, either from high ready, getting on the gun, or with it mounted on your shoulder from low ready, getting it up, click. I went up too high. Does that make sense? Makes sense, right? So up drills with the rifle. That's where I want you to start from. Now, uh, as far as building off of that, when you get your up drills where you need them to be, right, then go into all your other stuff. All right, I'm up, I shoot, I transition my pistol, I shoot, transition drill. Now I can build off of that and then go straight into my check drill also. I've finished my drill with the pistol, right? I bring the pistol back in retention. I'll check my rifle, that's something I can fix. And then I'll gas that gun back up again. I'll get it back in the fight, All right? Nice and easy, click, finish my drill, check my rifle, gas it up again, hit my uh, release. It's not gonna actually go forward because it's not locked to the rear but I'm back in the fight again. I've just rehearsed in the safety of my own home while sheltering in place, I've worked on the check drill, All right? If you're wanting to practice mag changes. Now, let's say you're not carrying a pistol to transition to, then if that's the case and that rifle uh, runs out of ammo, you need to be able to be fast with that mag change, hit it back up in the fight again. You can practice mag changes. If you're wanting to practice tack mag reloads where you're, uh, where you're retaining the mag, literally, you bring it in your workspace, grab that mag, bring it out, stick that next one in and save that one in your dump pouch, right? This should all be done smoothly and as fast as possible. Now, I mentioned uh, getting up to where you need to be. How do you know where you need to be? You need to have time standards. Now, for pistol, we say that your goal is we want you faster than one and a half seconds on that draw, all right? So from ready position, either here, arms in front, wherever, you need to be able to draw and get that first round on target within one and a half seconds. Where are we getting these standards from? If you guys go back through our uh, tactical rifleman video archive, you're gonna go back and you're gonna see there's a whole string of videos, me and coach from Texas A&M, and what we're doing is we're talking about what's called the critical task evaluations. I mentioned them because those are the no joke standards for most of the operator units in the US military, Special Operations Command. Now, uh, what am I holding in my hand? What this is, guys, is this is one of our student handouts from our classes. And I put this in almost all of our student handouts. This one happens to be Tactical Rifleman Combat Pistol Carbine Course. You go to 
It's towards the very end, it's right next to a drop chart for green tip. And listed here are the combat drills. Now, if you've been to one of my classes, you already have this. Use this as your list of drills to do dry firing, all right? Pistol presentation, 1.5 seconds. Loaded in holster, at the buzzer, draw and fire one shot. Huh, that's your draw. That's literally the standard I just gave you. Uh, next one's combat pistol reload, three and a half seconds. All you're gonna do is you're gonna draw, you're gonna shoot one round on the target, you're gonna do that mag reload, and then you're gonna fire another round on the target. All right, you've got three and a half seconds to do that. When you start getting into the rifle ones, they've got uh, from the high ready, they've got from the low ready. Uh, there are reload drills, transition drills, check drills, rifle now, pistol El Prez, rifle El Prez, and then rifle switching shoulders El Prez. This list, gents, will keep you busy while you are sheltering in place and if you master these things dry firing, I guarantee you when you get out to the range, you're gonna find that you are a much, much better shot and you won't be disappointed at the cost of the ammo that you're having to pay because you've already improved so much before you even got out to the range. Now you're just showing off, right? So good stuff. What about targets? Now, you've got choices, guys. You do, you've got lots of choices while you're dry firing. I don't care if you just put a dot up on the wall. I printed a bunch of USPSA targets, different sizes, and I put them up on the walls in my exercise room. So while I'm dry firing, I shoot the big ones fast near targets, and the smaller ones I shoot slower. Why do I shoot them slower? Because they're smaller because they're representing a target that's further away, different engagement speeds. Right? You can do the same thing. You can print targets, gents. It's easy stuff. Now, uh, when you buy a Cool Fire Trainer kit, they come with these sexy targets. Now, these are peel and stick. I stapled this one to the target because I'm not leaving it out here. I'm putting these back in the house. What I like about these, I don't know if you can catch how reflective this thing is, but uh, it's designed to make it very, very easy for you to see that laser that you have in your barrel, whether it's from a cert, uh, a cert pistol, a cert bolt in your AR, or you're using the screw-on laser that goes on the end of your pistol. All right? uh, these targets are awesome. I don't care if you even dry fire on me in the middle of a live stream. I don't care, I don't care. But pick small things to aim at, all right? Uh, Chad's brain. Aim at Chad's brain, something small, so you have that precise point to aim at. Chad, you know I'm just messing with you. All right, now, if you're looking for more of a challenge, you want moving targets, things like that, besides me moving around in my chair, go back to the Tactical Rifleman uh, archive and pull up our Rogers Range dry fire video. Now, what it is, is it is the nine tests from the Rogers Combat Pistol course. Right, and there are seven targets, but there's nine tests. They are designed to be ran with your pistol, but you can modify all of those drills and get on them with your rifle, you can. Multiple shots, they involve mag changes, behind cover, there's lots of great drills. Pull up the video, put it up on your flat screen TV, and there's just so much that you can do with just that, uh, with just that video alone. Use it for pistol, you can use it also for rifle. Now, if you don't want to do that, or you're looking to actually gauge your times, you can use a timer. Uh, this is the Pocket Pro Classic. Yes, there are more expensive pro timers, but you'll see I run these in classes. It's loud, and even me being deaf, I can hear it. Uh, but you can set a second beep on this, all right? So let's say you're wanting to work on that draw. You're about a one eight, one seven on your draw, you wanna get down to one five. Set it for that second beep to be one eight. And then when you, you get that beep, you draw. When you get that second beep, if it, is it before that click or after that click of the sear? Same thing with the rifle. Once you get so you can consistently beat it, move it up, make it 1.7. Then when you can beat that, make it 1.6, make it 1.5. You see what I'm getting at? 
hit the button, and it'll be on random, wait for it to come up, and you get the beep, draw, engage the target, or from the low ready or high ready, doing it with the rifle, it's gonna be the same thing. You get that beep, you're waiting, you're ready, when you hear that beep, bring it up and you get that click. Did I make my personal time standard, whatever your goal is? You're not going against me, you're not going against Chad or Z or anybody else. The goal is for you to use the timer to improve you. Now, when I dry fire, I personally don't use the pro timer. I don't, uh, because I've got to keep reaching down, hitting the button. Instead, what I use is on my phone, there's an app called Dry Fire Trainer, and you can put it up, set it up for as many repetitions as you want uh, in strings. So like I mentioned, uh, improving your, uh, from high ready, the standard is one second. Let's say you're at one and a half. Set it for 10, 12, 15 reps at 1.8. And then the next ones will be, you can set it 1.7, 1.6, 1.5. Get it down all the way to one second. And trust me, every time you get that beep and you're, you're getting that click, it, you'll get the repetitions in and you've, you're getting audible feedback whether you're making the time or whether you're not. When you can make the time consistently, make it faster, make it faster, till you can hit the actual standards that you have set for yourself as a goal, all right? Remember, accuracy is still important. You're not just moving that gun fast, trying to, uh, trying to get a fast draw. You still have to be accurate. And that's why I think it's so important that you invest. I mentioned I'm gonna get the cert bolt for my AR. I've got this, the, uh, cool fire trainer with the laser that screws onto the end of it, right? Um, the cert pistols, training pistols, Z swears by them. Right? There's lots of good things out there. The, the laser inserts that go in your barrel, I, I'm not big fans of them because they slide out. I can, my draw, the thing that always flying across the room, but get a dedicated drive fire system if it can fit your budget. If it can't, don't, literally, for your pistol, little wadded up piece of paper to keep it out of battery. In your rifle, guys, I'm not joking. You just watched me stick the piece of, uh, uh, stick the thing of chapstick in there. Don't use batteries, just cause that's how I was taught by an old uh, master sergeant. Use a thing of chapstick, use something plastic. Cut a piece of PVC pipe that you can put in there. Cut a small wooden dowel right, that you can put in there. But my point is don't put anything in there metal that can scratch the inside of your chamber or those lock and lugs, all right? So take care of your guns, right? But hey, dry fire and dry fire with these rifles, not just your pistol. This is your primary in the gunfight. Gents, if I'm going to a gunfight, I'm bringing a rifle. I carry a pistol every day because I'm not planning on getting into a gunfight, right? This is only to save the day, hoping I never need it. If I know I'm going to a gunfight, home defense, anything like that, on the battlefield, I'm bringing an adult rifle with uh, high capacity mags. Anyways, that's all I got this week for Tactical Rifleman. Hope you all got a little bit out of it. And now you know the deal, leave the comments below. I do read them all. If you've got other ideas for how people can cheaply dry fire, if you've got your favorite dry fire drills, stick them down there in the comments section. Y'all take care and shoot straight. If you like this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, make sure you follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter so you don't miss out on anything.